Hello, beautiful people. How are we all doing this Friday night? And my neighbours being slightly noisy, so hopefully it's not going to cause too many issues. So let me know where you're from, what's been going on, have you been having a good week? I found the ability to change the colours to purple, so I felt like having a colour change. So how's everyone been doing? I had a three-day challenge uh, this last week in my group all about um, how to create different content ideas and break it down and, and really sell in a really sacred way. And I've just had the most beautiful feedback. So I am in a fantastic mood. Hello, Kylie. Carly, sorry. And we've got Christy. I've got Melissa and Kerry. How are we all doing? Okay. Oh, it does it a little differently like that. I'm liking this new bubble feature. That looks much nicer than taking up the whole thing so you can't see the cards. How exciting. So, what have we all been up to? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Been good, Christy? I am, um, it's a Mercury retrograde and there's been a few times where I've had a little bit of like miscommunication, like I'm not understanding what someone's saying to me um, and I'm just like, what are they meaning? But apart from that, I've been really blessed and I've been smudging my, I, I speak to the, car uh, the spirit of my webcam, the spirit of my laptop, the spirit of Telstra, the spirit of NBN. Uh, so that I have a great communications and so far that's been working. Okay, Melissa, you've got some really interesting cards that are really um, very, very connected. Oh, you've been, Laura, I love Caroline Mice. She's my hero. Um, and she took me on my entire journey of understanding archetypes. Um, it's grown from there, but she's my foundation. So, Melissa, you have a very clear reading. You have the thread card and the, the archetype. So this is asking you to look through the connections and the patterns in your life. Now, because it's got the cave and the tear right beside it, I feel like you've been um, repeating certain patterns, whether it's self-love, self-doubt, um, bad relationships, negative self-talk, maybe uh, the same business or the same boss and you, you manifest narcissists or bullies. There's like a reoccurring pattern and it seems to have like a bit of a dark feel to it. Not dark as in like it's evil, dark as in it's heavy for you. So this thread is really asking you to go in deep, go into that cave, which is deep inner work, because it's in the cave and it is deep and personal. There's no one else that's going to be able to provide the insights. You're going to have to do it. And you're going to have to look at those patterns and go, what's the common thread? Why does this keep happening to me? Look at your parents' patterns. Look at your, um, look at your teachers, religious studies, like any kind of cultural things. And look for that common pattern through everything. And the tear is death and rebirth. So that tells me that you have that period where you're actually going to let go of that pattern. And when that happens, you must go through that little mourning phase of letting go of the old so that you can rebirth the new. So letting go of old parts of Melissa that no longer serve you, old patterns, old perceptions, old lenses. and um, bursting into this new person who's high frequency, can manifest, heal. You, you, you're just going to be stronger, more confident and more yourself, more in your sovereign. 
So a little bit of um, journeying within for you and very much looking at those patterns. But that death, that, that tear, which is the death and rebirth, fantastic card to be having at the end of these three card cycle because it's telling me that you will actually rebirth into the new. You're tying up these last patterns and you're really looking at that thread. And you can actually... Melissa, you can call in and say, show me the thread, show me um, the connection, show me where it all started. And if you actually work with this card, the synchronicities can be really profound. So pay attention to um, the, the dreams, the, the strange conversations and things that seem like messages because you can be actually getting help from your higher self and guides as well. So I'm, I'm really excited for you, um, even though that that's a little bit of a, you know, there's work to be done, really positive feeling like you can do it this time, you can break these cycles. Um, if you're feeling like you're unlucky, anything that's a superstition, a pattern, a repetitive pattern, a repetitive thought form, it's really time now to just cut those threads, break that pattern and, um, and go and birth into the new you. So it's, it's really quite amazing. Hi, Kay from Mount Isa. I spent a few years up in Mount Isa. And let me just scroll up. Hang one second. Um, oh, Asta, how are you, beautiful? I'm sending you so much healing. You pop into my head at random um, uh, all the time. So I, I definitely feel connected with you at the moment. And... Uh, that you're going to get better miraculously quick. Um, Carly, hello, lovely Jess. Um, Carly Mills, beautiful. Laura's been eye-opening. If you have time, I'd love a card. Well, let's go, you, Laura. So did that make sense, um, Melissa? Oh, there you go. Thank you so much. I'm super excited for the next chapter. Very much appreciated. The answers are going to be very much internal. So you'll have like this epiphany and you'll be like, oh, why did I never realise this? Or you'll start to see that pattern. And um, you might be having a conversation with someone, Melissa, and go, this is me. Like when I was in the kitchen one time, my mum was whinging about one of my siblings doing something. And I, I was peeling vegetables and I froze because I was thinking in my head, oh, if she never says anything to my sibling. The situation's never going to change. And then I had just been whinging half an hour beforehand about my boss and how I was constantly being used and constantly doing all this ridiculous amount of overtime. And I'm, I froze with my peeler and I went, oh, my God. I'm doing the same thing as my mum does, but it's in my workplace. It's, but it's the same pattern. And, um, and I had this full, absolute, amazing epiphany and I was able to completely change that pattern because I had that clarity. So something like that comes through. That's the power of that thread card. And it's just like dawning feeling, but it's the, it's the realisation inside. So it's really beautiful. Um, oh, oh no, I have, um, I have a spammer called Regina, which is like the lioness queen. They, the spammers are picking the most interesting, um, Okay, so that, did I reconnect? So um, if anybody sees Regina Jane pop back on, if you could just ban or block her or, or um, repeat the, um, the banning, that would be wonderful because uh, for some reason it doesn't allow me to do it. I'm going to have to get some technical help. Okay, the beautiful Laura. Well, let's have some cards for you.
Okay, so you have an, a reading that requires a little bit of work as well, Laura, um, and it's around your connection with your womb and your femininity and honouring your body as a temple. So you have the first card, the bardo, which is forgive the unforgivable. So it's where you're in that limbo stage where you've almost made a shift but you quite haven't and you're holding on to past stuff, old stuff. And um, quite often you need to just let go of just a few aspects. The other two cards that come through are the womb and the temple. So that's telling me it's um, either somebody said something to you at some stage about making you feel less than as a woman, um, an abusive relationship, um, a father that was very much in the patriarchy and not supportive of the feminine, uh, a toxic workplace. So you just need to go back through and disengage and cut the cords and do some healing on any of those people or situations which make you feel less than and uh, uh, any programs um, if you've been reading Caroline's stuff this is very much the energy of the prostitute archetype now everyone goes oh the prostitute but that it's not about your sexuality as you would know the prostitute is where um, we love ourselves but we constantly give away so we say yes, 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 when we really want to say no. We martyr ourselves. We are the shapeshifter. You always adapt for other people. And the temple is like setting that boundaries, setting that really strong, that this is what I want to be doing. I want to um, have do this, 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 and this with my life. And I can't do that unless I start putting myself first. So you need to transition from the prostitute into the lover and it's self-love. So I really, anything that's made you feel less than as a powerful woman, um, it really needs to be brought to the surface and looked at. So I can't remember, Laura, if you're part of my um, uh, Facebook group, The Sovereign Circle with Jess Beard. I've got the link in the description and I've got the most loveliest bunch of women and a couple men and, and we really work on different aspects. And um, there's Monday healings, there's different teachings on archetypes and um, and a monthly Zoom where we kind of like make a declaration on what we're working on. and you need to really make that declaration to work on embodiment of your power as a feminine, like, rock star and anything that's holding you back. So that bardo tells me that there has to be something that's making you feel less than an empowered queen. Oh, I always felt like a little bit of a, like, ugh, you, you, you know, like a flinch. So it could be some stuff about religion-based or anything else. So. Um, really go in deep and look at what you need to let go of because it's no longer your story it's somebody else's story what is preventing me from standing in my power as a sovereign woman and going this is who i am i love myself wholeheartedly and i'm a rock star so have a look at that my love if you need any help always reach out okay so, let's just have a little sip, will be a second? Did that make sense? Okay, I'm just going to smudge the cards, my loves. All 
right. Alison Bickerstaff King. Cool name. Flowers, peace, heart and prayer. I love that. Now, as always, um, my readings have taken a little bit longer. Oh, thank you for blocking her tre um, trees, Teresa. So um, my readings take a little bit longer than some of the other divine ladies um, and my computer can do some weird jumps. Don't hesitate to ask for a reading again because um, I don't have the ability to scroll too far. The comments come too, through too quickly. Okay, so you have the flame. So this is a card that's really calling for you to ignite creativity and passion. Now, I don't normally say passion with this card. It's more like that fiery creative air energy, but passion came through really strongly, like your passions for projects, for life, for something specific. If you're being called to do something, then you um, really need to follow that intuition. If it's something creative, then, then go for it. You have the storm. Another card which can be a chaotic change, a sudden insight, a lightning bolt of realisation, an epiphany. Um, so a storm in a cup kind of energy. It's quite, it can be quite full on but it can also be quite profound. So that's change is coming and it doesn't have to be dark. It can be quite positive, like lightning is voltage, frequency, but it doesn't tell me that it's a stagnant energy. So creativity and that lightning of change and chaos, so very exciting. You have the card of the animal. So this is being deeply in love with yourself, your, who you are, being comfortable in your skin. So if you've been thinking of having anything creative, a creative business, um, anything that's uh, acknowledging um, birthing something, creating something, uh, and you've been having fears like, oh, that's not my, my normal self. I don't know um, if if that's possible. Could I really do that? And you get like that mm, kind of thing. This is telling you to embody it. Really embrace that creativity. And that everybody is creative. I don't care who they are. They have some form of creativity that they express themselves through and this is telling you to really honor that and go for gold with it and it can really help you on so many levels the the animal can also be very um like in the physical so if you've been having any health problems depression feeling lost um creative pursuits um, clay work, working with your hands, beading, artwork, painting, something that's, you know, very artistic, writing, you know, I'm just getting the hands. It'll help your actual overall well-being across all levels. So it's not just the self-love and being and happy in the body. To me, I get it's just as deeply healing. So if you get some intuitions to do something, study something, learn something, be something, something creative, really, really go for it because it's going to be um, really profound, very profound. I know I saw a message up there from Laura I missed and this makes a lot of sense. I was just starting to work on a relationship with my ex-partner. Religion is a very interesting point. I will go into the other group and explain where I am there. 
Perfect. That'd be lovely, Laura. Um, that's what the purpose of that group is, is to support you during, um, you know, your journey. So that's really lovely. Come along and, and describe it all and um, talk it out and, you know, anything that makes you feel less than than absolute queen and empowerment, that bardo really needs to be worked on. Okay. And what, what did you just write then? My page is jumping. It's really quite weird. But we are in a Mercury retrograde. So where did that next one go? And do, do, do. sorry, yes, I'm in your group. Makes a lot of sense. Oh, perfect. Now, Ashley, I am not a medium whatsoever, but I'm drawn to you. So I'm going to do a reading and I'm not going to guarantee that it's from your uncle, though. Actually, I said that the last time I was drawn to do that and the lady actually really resonated with the reading. So I should probably watch my wording. I'm going to say this. I'm drawn to you. I'm going to draw some cards and we'll see what comes through and you can decide from there, Blossom. mother card first up when you say it was your uncle was it your mother's brother I'll just wait for you to answer was it your mum's brother got such a delay at times um, Therese, Teresa goes, you're welcome, please. Can I have a reading for my daughter? Lost her daughter four years ago, still grieving. We're going to together help each other with our two adult kids. We appreciate it. Well, Therese, um, Therese, Teresa, I will see what I can do. Um, yes, your mum's brother. So that's why the mum card comes through first. So there's two other cards. You've got the vow and you've got the comic. So with this vow energy, that one there, I get this real sense of like when we make a sacred vow, we're making a declaration to the universe. We're making a sacred vow for ourselves. Because we've asked about your uncle, I would be inclined to say this is that he will be always looking out for you and to communicate with him, to, you know, no matter what happened in the past, whether or not there's unsaid things or there is, um, you know, he might have done some good things or he might have done some bad things. He's human and he had his journey. But I just get this feeling like um, no matter what happens, if he's on the other side and he's looking over you, call upon that and really work with it, like that vow of protection and he is looking out. You do have the comic. So this card here is means that um, I would actually be looking at your family members who um, might be smiling and saying, oh, it's all okay, but actually underneath it's not. Some of our greatest comedians um, were depressed. So I think this could also be a little bit um, for yourself and for all everyone. That I just get like a lot of a, a sense of scattered, not really knowing where to think or do, like not knowing how to act and being uncomfortable with death. Um, and there's, uh, I'm getting, um, this is actually quite powerful. I've, I've suggested it to multiple people over time. 
So if you actually get together and um, talk about the funniest times, the really funny memories, oh, do you remember when he did such and such? Or do you remember when how ridiculous this was and actually really focus on some of the funny stuff? I think that actually might help. But if your intuition is saying that someone is actually not grieving properly, um, you can't force them to talk, but maybe spend more time with them, call them more often, visit more often if you can. And um, remember to bring up the fun times with them because that's going to help with the healing because it shifts the vibration and it also might make them talk more about how much they miss them because you're focusing on the positive and then all of a sudden they go oh I really wish he was here or I really wish I could have told him you know the shit thing he did to me when I was 12 or you know like there's a lot of unanswered um opportunities and what ifs when death happens and uh, I had a, a lot of death in, in my younger years from about 16 to 21. It was funeral, 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 funeral. And um, so I, I'm actually quite good at grieving these days. And I know that sounds a bit weird, but I, um, I've kind of had enough practice that I can do it in a healthy way. And I know that sounds a bit odd but that's just the um process you, you know and um so I, I it really works if you can talk about the funny quirky remember when he did this remember when he gave me this gift when my dad passed away when I was 21 I uh you know took such great comfort in the fact that I used to buy him every father's day the most ridiculous present I used to go out of my way to um, find, like, the most idiotic thing. One time I gave him a plastic frog that croaked when you went past it. Another time it was a stiff, stuffed pink pig and ridiculous. But it was a, in, it was a joke, a running joke. And um, actually Father's Day was much harder than any of the other dates because I really missed that. But oh, my God, the stories and those memories and the way we used to laugh, and, and those are the things that you focus on with the energy of this card, is you can heal with the happiness, but don't you dare think that you can hide the sadness because that just leads to it getting darker and darker and darker until you can't smile anymore. So I hope that helped. And um, I... I, I really do feel like he's watching over you. That sacred vow card has just really got such a beautiful energy to it. And I'm sending you so much love. Losing someone is, is, never, um, is never easy. It really isn't. And it's dealing with the loss of loved ones and pets, our fur babies. Um, it's the hardest part of being human, you know. So I, I'm really sending you love and I just think he loves you a lot. Oh, you've just wrote he, he raised you. Oh, so that's why the mother card came through. So he was, you know, there with the raising. I, I thought too when I saw that it meant that it was just on the feminine, uh, feminine lineage, the mother. but. If he's um, if that card comes first and he raised you, then he took on that archetypal role um, of the mother and the father and the protector, and that's beautiful. So I would feel much comfort right at this moment because um, you are very much loved. Mm -hmm. I'm sending you a lot of love, gorgeous. And I um and uh, if you ever want to um, chat or um, need some love sent your way, just reach out and um, and I can do that with ease. And uh, and uh, it would be my my pleasure. And um, you can join the the group if you would like, and just stay connected. They're a really lovely bunch of women. 
Okay, let's smudge those cards. Hi, Wendy, how are you? Hi, Bryony. Hello, Katrina Ball, how are you? Okay, Brioni, you have a slightly odd reading. Normally when the crone comes through, I feel it's like a part of themselves. But you have the card of forgiveness and the sword, which is swift action. And like the cutting out of things that no longer serve. And I'm wondering whether or not you might have had in your life some toxic elders like grandparents or um, parents that were older than you, aunts and uncles, um, religious figures, teachers, people that were in a place of where they're supposed to provide wisdom and teachings and nourishment and instead they've gone the opposite direction and have actually crushed or suppressed you. Um, told you stop being silly or um, don't be foolish you need to grow up um, and not kind of listening to your wisdoms your your inner chrome I just wanted to ask you that like have you got any elderly uh, like elders like people you're supposed to be respect and have your respect um, but they've actually been detrimental the only reason I'm asking that is you have the bardo beside it, which is forgiveness. And I um and because the crone represents wisdom and that, that wise woman inside of you, um forgive the well that could actually if you're the crone and stepping into that energy then you it's the understanding so the the bardo remember the bardo is also that void space between um one place and the and the next but it's a, like hard of forgiveness but if you've been in a domestic violent violence relationship it's only been a month like for the cards to come through and ask you to forgive that that's a very big calling i um Normally the cards, when they're asking for forgiveness, it's the stuff that's a little bit older. Unless your higher self is, is actually, you know, quite strict and is like, okay, Brownie, it's time for you to be letting, going and doing this. You've got a mission that you need to be on and, um, you, you know, you need to be of service. And your, your higher self can be literally calling you to service right now. And to do that is to radically cut away anything in your life that is stopping you from being into your wisdom I'm still getting it's, it's your chrome but it's like it's an older um yep my mother it would be yes I'm still getting that because you can still have that chrome which is your wisdoms you've been the, the chrome comes through and it's like you're wise because of all the things you've suffered and you've done and everything else like that but I'm still getting it's an influence so I would say that's your mother now did she set up a blueprint inside of you where you've gone into the domestic violence relationship like were you repeating her pattern did she have a history of um 
uh, negative relationships where she gave her power away to your father or to other male figures. Um, and you've actually been repeating that program. Um, just curious about that because that could also be that sword um, needing to come through and really work with that pattern. I actually am really getting the feeling that your higher self is just like, okay, you really need to just make some really big sweeping decisions. Um, you gave the power to my father. Yes. So I, I really want you, if you're coming out of this relationship after only a month, um, I know this might sound a bit full on to be giving you this advice only after one month, but I think that that's what that sword is really asking you to do is to really um, don't jump into any other relationships, do an, a ton of, of internal work and breaking that pattern and that blueprint that your mum has set up for you to follow because it's not your story. And I normally wouldn't give that advice to someone after only one month, but I actually feel that that's really what's it's coming through from, from your higher self. So sometimes when we're called to action like that and and um, it's a really big giant push from spirit, it's because there is a greater purpose. So if you're being drawn to teaching, healing, um, coaching, anything where you're helping other people um, that could be why you are being pushed to to go into the lessons and breaking the cycles and forgiving both your ex and your mom and going I do not want your stories anymore I am cutting with my sword my warrior sword and I am just cutting all of this away because I don't want this in my life anymore I don't want your patterns I don't want people like you I'm making some drastic changes and I'm putting myself first so I hope that doesn't sound too harsh for somebody who's just come out of the relationship but that's what's coming through so um, forgive me for being the bearer of some strict kind of messages but I think that that's really, um, yeah, I, I think you can take it. I think your higher self is like, I want to I want to move on. I, I want, I'm not doing this ever again. I know, I know that I need to do some healing and I know I've got to do this and forgive the swearing, but it's like, fuck them. You, you know, like it, fuck them and get your sword out and you, you're going to go on your path. You're not going to walk anyone else's path anymore. So um, I hope that um, makes sense and resonates. And, I, and I'm sorry for such a strong message in, a, in probably a really raw time in your life. But I'm sending you so much love. And um, same offer to as before. If you need any help, reach out, join the group. Um, you know, I've got some really amazing women in there who've been through similar journeys and um, and I would love to support you. Surround yourself with a tribe of people who are the absolute opposite to the old archetypes, people who are going to lift you up, help you to rise, heal those old patterns because you don't want to go back and do it again. So I hope that resonated, Blossom. Um, oh, good. I, I'm always a bit worried when I give, like, I, I don't know who you are. I only get a sense of people through a laptop. And to say to somebody after only a one month, this is the message, I was um, a little bit nervous then, because, but it really felt like you could handle it. So I'm, I'm so happy that... Um, you, you know, you're strong and you know you can do it. I, that really is beautiful. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, Louise, that's going to take a chunk. I'm, I'm sorry if that, if you want me to take that down, let me know. Um, actually, I, I will take that down. It's a bit, 
personal. So I'm doing Louise, guys. Um, okay, so let me smudge. So Louise, I'm going to ask, because that's a bit of a full on question. I'm going to ask what archetypes is going to help you right in this moment, what's going to help you shift and transform. Okay, so right off the bat, we've got the healer card, Louise. Um, so have you been studying any of the healing modalities? Reiki, massage, bone therapy, crystal healing. Is there anything um, which, um, you, you know, the, you, the healer means you need to deeply heal, but it also comes through usually... When someone is a healer themselves. Okay, so with this healer card, I think you need to find yourself someone who's a spiritual mentor or spiritual healer that's nearby that you can go and see regularly. Um, I I have uh, actually on every Monday I do a card reading with a different set which is more healing based and I'll do a healing based upon what cards come through and that's kind of for the energies of the week and just what's relevant for the group so that's one aspect you're more than welcome to come along and and listen each Monday or listen to the replay I think going and finding a healer who can do hands-on healing, um, Reiki, shamanic, breath work, yoga, is something that is going to help you on the physical level to heal because you've got a lot of mental trauma, you've got a lot of emotional and energetic trauma, but the body is it's mind, body, soul. So I really am getting that you need to, to get some healings, but you also need to really honour the body and it's going to actually help support all the others. Um, so your second card is the lover. Now, this doesn't mean a physical lover. Well, sometimes it does, but in this aspect, it is self-love. Um, and... You have the prostitute archetype, which I was talking about before, where you constantly give to other people. And then the lover is the higher aspect of the prostitute. So it's the lover archetype that actually um, you call in and work with. And this is where you love yourself enough to say no. You love yourself to stop putting other people's wants and needs first. It's your time. You love yourself enough to say fuck you to your ex-partner I'm gonna do me I'm gonna love me and I'm gonna go do my own thing it's your story your daughter if she's hiding things to you fuck you sorry swearing tonight don't normally swear but it's that you know I, I'm over it and doing that swearing put your handing up and inserting a boundary can sometimes be the most profound act of self-love you're ever ever going to do for yourself now you have a warning card you have the venom so this tells me that as you're stepping up and you're putting yourself first it's going to be twofold you are going to actually have your internal thoughts are going to fight you oh I shouldn't do this or um, I'm not worthy or I fear this or I such and such and um, your your inner critic is going to be sabotaging but I also feel like as you change as you finally say fuck yeah put your hand up not doing it 
as you finally do that, your family members are going to wig out because they're used to you being the victim. Sorry for using that word, but it's really appropriate. They are used to you being the way that you are upset about everything. They've done this to me, reacting. All your archetypes are in, in, you know, activated. Now, remember, the child, the victim, the saboteur, the prostitute archetypes, they are not bad archetypes. Caroline Mice talks about them. They're our survival archetypes. They come in when we are triggered. It is our job to reverse engineer our triggers so that we take power of the situation. This is what I teach in my coaching programs. It's what I teach in my group. And it is the key to freedom. So you need to be stepping into that lover. You need to be going, oh, I am so, so putting myself first. And as you do that, remember, you'll fight yourself, but you will have projections and, oh, don't be ridiculous, mum, or why would you try and do that? And just hear my words. Fuck them. I know that sounds naughty, but that's that's what I want you to do. It's time to do you. And that's it. And um, go get some support. Some support. I uh, I remember when I went to my first healer. Um, this is when I had my spiritual activation a decade ago, and I um I didn't want to go for a spiritual healing. I was like, whatever. So there was this brochure and I'm reading all these things like shamanic healing and I'm reading um, Mune Key rites and I'm reading all these different things but then she did this muscular stuff so I full-on lied to myself and her I'm like oh I've got some leg pain and I'm just going to come for this so I tricked myself into going for a muscular leg tune-up I sat down and I just started going, I did, 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 and out of my mouth poured all these problems. And she did my very first energy healing. And it's the start of everything because I started to honor the fact that I had an energy field in the first place. And it is just as in need as nourishment as eating food and sleeping, having positive thoughts. You've got to look after your energy system. It is a vital part of who we are. So go get that healing, radically look after yourself and set boundaries. And I've I'm been draw, drawing quite a few people to me tonight who've had some really tough times. So I, as just as I said with the other ladies, um, join my group if you need help. You know, it's what I'm here for. I have the priestess um, archetype. I have the healer. I have the teacher. I embody those. I stand in my sovereign and go, I can help you. What's the use of, of being here and, and helping people with these cards if I'm not going to own all of my abilities? So I love being of service. All priestesses do. Okay. Uh-oh. Jerry Kane, we have another... Um, I have another do dodgy one. Um, Louise, if she's narcissistic, sometimes narcissism can be a learned behaviour, especially when it's in young women. And they don't actually even know that they're doing it. They just think that's the way that everything's supposed to be. So if you actually detach and just tell them to all F off and do your own thing, she's going to be faced with the realisation that she has to work on herself. I know a couple of people whose daughters have been similar to yours, and it's only until you completely detach and leave it that, that they grow up. Otherwise, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a real learned behaviour. Um, sorry about um, Jerry, 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 Jerry. Okay. So who have we got next? Do, do, do. Let me, um, oh, I clicked on love it. Well, thank you very much. Um, can somebody ban um, Jerry for me? Because Jerry's a bit of a dick. I'm swearing again. This is a bit odd. Maybe I need to smudge myself. 
Oh, some some um some weeks I swear a little bit. I um I usually swear if I've been near somebody who's a swearer. I, I did go out today. Maybe I um maybe I've been in the presence of somebody who's swearing and I've just borrowing. Hmm. Okay. Trish. Trish is a first timer. In the forest, feeling a little bit lost and overwhelmed with possibilities. Oh no, I've got another one. Baba, Baba Lawal Blessing Zivalauto. Um, shit. Sorry, guys. I'm getting spammed left, right, and center. Obviously, I need to get better smudge. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> I'm just laughing because one of my spammers is now spamming my other spammer. So Babalow well blessing if you love to is spamming Jerry Kane. So that's made my night. <laughs> uh, yes, I know Wendy. I don't think anyone would ever friend request them. Um, I've never heard of anyone doing that. We did have somebody who um, claimed to have gone through the things that um, their story didn't make any sense. So I actually think they were part of scam. Okay, so beautiful Trish, are you still with us with all of these interesting um, banners going on? So. We have the forest card for you, Trish. So this card comes through when um, we can be feeling a little bit lost and overwhelmed with just so many ideas. We're like, you can't see the forest for the trees, as the saying is. And, you know, sometimes you walk into the forest and you look around and there's just so many trees that you just don't know where the path is. So that's a little bit of overwhelm, but it's also very creative energy. And it's very much um, don't, it's like the seed card. And you can actually, um, let me see if I can block these idiots. I'm so sorry. I um, Wait for me, Trish. So block user. Okay, let's try that one again. Um, block user. Okay, so Trish, I'm just going to, I don't want to waste the energy of your reading by dealing with all this crap. So I'm just going to have to ignore it and, and, and ask for your guys' forgiveness because I can't block them for some strange reason on StreamYard. So that forest card. Now, I have this sense, Trish, that there is um, so like with the seed card, it can sometimes be like so many different creative ideas. Like, should I go and study this? Should I start a business? Should I retire? Should I um, learn to do mediumship? Should I do card readings? I want to be a healer. I want to do this. I want to do that. And you're just like, oh, my God, I don't know where to start. So the key to um, getting out of the forest is to just start with one thing. You find the tallest tree or the idea that appeals to you the most 
and you start walking towards it, you start taking action to create it. Now, the reason I feel like it's a bit personal for you is you have the mask. So this card is asking you to remove the mask and reveal yourself. So this card and this energy of this archetype is about hidden desires, things that you've been wanting to do for a decade or two and you just haven't done it. Maybe you've been studying herbs, maybe you've been um, studying um, all kinds of modalities and you've not stepped up and been that healer. You've not stepped up and been that teacher. Maybe you've been wanting a promotion and you're like suppressing that because, um, you know, tall poppy syndrome or you're telling yourself you can't do it. It's There's a, a real block about something you're not revealing and, you, and it feels like you're at this time, like what this timeline, this lost feeling of like I've got, like I just don't know which one to do. Should I do this, this, this or this? Now, the third card tells me it's scary to you. So I think you have some kind of intuition and it's some kind of thing that you're wanting to create. Spirit in your higher self has been going, Trish, it's time to do this. Trish, you've got all these years of experience. Why aren't you doing this? Um, it's something. And this is scary. Remember how you walk out on on ice and it starts to crack and you go am I going to fall through into freezing water and potentially die and that's the energy of this card you're just like oh my god I'm on shaky ground right now do what do I do you and you're afraid of taking action it's taking those steps and for it to be right beside that mask you are afraid to take off that mask and reveal your desires so I think you're going to either know immediately what it is that I'm talking about because it's been your desire for a long time or I would be taking um, a few days with that forest card and going into your psyche and going, well, exactly what do I want to be doing? Because with that mask there, there is something you're not telling the world and telling yourself or telling other people. Is that making sense, Blossom? I have got no new comments for a while. So that's always a bit scary. It's been three minutes since my last comments. Hmm. Is there anyone still there? Well, I hope that worked, Trish. And I'm just going to go on some past ones, which I um, see if I can find. Oh, there's all the spams. Okay. Wendy, I, I know this is going to sound really, oh, here we go. Yeah, it's just all popped up. Perfect. Okay. So we have got... Kim, let's do a reading for the beautiful Kim. Um, so, let's just smudge the cards. So, did that make sense to you, love? Okay. What does Kim need to hear? And the beautiful Kim. Oh, we've got the father. Oh, I'm so sorry, Trish. Um, I think they're just bots, and um, and it's really just drives me mad sometimes they just bombard us and some weeks it's just really bad and then you'll go for a few weeks and it's not so bad so I've tried smudging I've tried everything I've tried getting the strongest um settings possible um okay 
Um, Jackie, Ke Jerry Kane is a spammer that I tried everything to block and I, I couldn't get rid of him. And the other one had some big giant long name, which was African, and I butchered multiple times. So I'm sorry. Um, and uh, my name is Jess Beard and only me. Actually, I don't even contact anybody. It's your job to contact me if you need help. So <laughs> I've never once in all my time of how many months have I been doing this? And I've never once contacted somebody. So um, if you ever, ever, ever receive any messages from anybody of, after watching a spiritual events directory um, and it's not the name of the person, then it's just a spammer being a spammer or it's a bot. So, Kim, you are in for an incredible spiritual activation. Hold on to your underpants. So, we have the father energy, which is the divine masculine, which is taking action. It can be healing the divine um, men, divine masculine. So, you might go into the role of helping men in some ways, or it can be both. It, it actually feels like both. And it's really, um, uh, really taking that divine action and, um, and stepping up. You, you, you can have your creative ideas and all of this intuition and all of this amazing stuff, but if you don't do anything with it, it doesn't manifest. You must take that action. And um, uh, you have an initiation card. So this is innermost knowing and mystical truths. So this is where the mystic will often come into people's lives and they really start working with that next level. Uh, they'll um, learn a spiritual um, mo modality. Um, they, you, you might be drawn to read books, go to workshops, study. Um, you, you know, it, it's trusting your intuition it's very fourth and fifth dimensional. Your dreams can go off the charts. Synchronicities can go off the charts. But it's very much about trusting your intuition. You've got the shaman right beside it. So that tells me that it is a, it's going to be an incredibly spiritual initiation and an upgrading of abilities and stepping into that place. If you take the action with that father card, with that divine masculine archetype and you really um now i just want to warn you kim that the initiation cards are on all levels so your intuition doesn't just work with spiritual stuff it's in your workplace it's in your home life it's in your family life it's across the board so it's a time when you really, really get activated and your intuition and trusting yourself and the truth on all levels. Lessons, lessons, layer upon layer. Who are you? What do you stand for? What's happening? If you're getting told to do this, trust your intuition. If you fight this card, if you fight the energy of this initiation, it just drags on longer. You, not, you need to trust yourself and intuition wholeheartedly and you move through it a lot easier. The Shaman card, really, you'll find so much solace and grounding and peace with the elements. Work with the elements. Um, pay attention to your dreams. It is also fourth and fifth G energy. Lucid dreaming, dreaming, intuition, daydreaming. Um, uh, connecting with the elements. Now, sometimes with that shaman archetype, it can actually be learning through wounds. So embrace these two cards and don't fight them. Otherwise, you can end up, you know, having a, a little um, uh, something or other health-wise which makes you forced to deal with these I've had friends who developed insomnia I've had another friend who um, badly hurt their foot and couldn't move forward and then when they finally were laying in bed they um, 
happened to reach over and read a book which downloaded and had this huge activation. But if they'd just read the book when their intuition said to, they wouldn't have had to hurt their foot. I know that sounds a bit radical, but that's the energy of the shaman is, you know, they can actually learn through a wounding. Everyone thinks the shaman, you put some beads in your hair and you jump around the fire and, you you know, you're famous and, and fancy and woohoo. But I am legitimately respectful of this archetype. It comes into my field and I go, yes, I'll do whatever you want because I don't want to learn lessons the hard way. And that's what the, sh- the shaman can do is if you don't listen to your intuition, you learn it the hard way. And I don't want that for you or for anybody. But that's your calling. That's your calling. But the, the priestess and the healer in me says, just trust your intuition and go, go, go. Take that action. Does that make sense? All righty. So, um, uh, Louise, lady wanted a donation for reading, said, don't be scared, dear. Oh, no, Louise, I'm so sorry. Um, thank you, and this makes sense. You can, that gnosis energy, make a sacred vow, Kim. Say to yourself and spirit and go, I am willing to trust my intuition and take action if you clearly show me what I'm supposed to be doing. And if they show you something that's a little bit scary and you're like, am I making this up? Go, I need three signs. If you want me to do that, show me three signs and co-create with your higher self in the universe. But it's a real push for you to take action and trust your intuition. All righty, my blossoms, I am now over time. Sorry about the spammers. Um, anybody who'd like to join my group, the Sovereign Circle with Jess Beard, um, I have a beautiful um, healing every Monday morning. I do different teachings. Um, I'm a, a business coach as well as a self-esteem coach and an archetypal teacher. So sometimes um, if it feels right, there is business challenges in there, like how to write content and different things. Other times it's archetypal based, other times it's cards. So I adapt to what the group needs and what, and I deeply listen to what people need. Um, so uh, I'm excited. Um, I've also got coming up in, I think, a fortnight, I'll be having a three-day online workshop across three different groups. But I'll be telling um, more information about that. Um, And you can also like my page because there'll be more information there as well. And it's going to be about mind, body, spirit. And um, there's three of us. Um, and it's going to be amazing. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And um, I'm really excited for you, Kim. Um, I know that sounds a bit strange, but I personally love it when an initiation card comes through for people, and sometimes I just get this. They're fine. It's like a clicky kind of feel, and, uh, and I think you're going to be fine. But I'm warning you with that shaman, If you do not trust your intuition, you will manifest a hard lesson. So work with it. Go get into nature, baths, fire, burn incense, smudge, play with crystals, walk barefoot, swim. All those things are going to really help you as you go through your initiation. I'm sending you so much love and I'll see you next week.